There's a couple of inlets on either side for, uh, what, for heater or something? They would have been for like blower motor inlet ducts, yes. But now it's for something else. So you can kind of see in the wheel well, there's a duct. Like a tube. A tube of some kind was put in there. And then you go in here, in the fender, and that's... Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is my 1949 Cadillac Custom Resto Mod. And I am so overjoyed with you all liking this car as much as me. It's closing in on a million views, which is awesome on an old Cadillac. I didn't expect it to do that well, but obviously my love bled through to the video with you all watching it too. So thank you so much for that. But the car wizard has been digging into this thing and we've made some pretty weird discoveries. There's some weird obsessions with this car that, uh, well, I'm sure they serve a purpose, but it's, it's very strange. So we're going to dig into that along with a few other strange discoveries, what the wizard is struggling with on this one, but it's still nowhere close to what the wizard is struggling with on my import cars right now. It is a massive pain to fix anything that's not in the United States. Even the United States is kind of a pain, but something overseas, it's just 10 times worse. And then after that, we're going to head down to your nation, Bob, who I am a terrible influence on. He's not really Euro-Asian Bob anymore. He's got a lot of fine American metal that he is owning, collecting, selling. He's a dealer, but he's keeping a lot of it. And we're gonna check something out, including a very rare Riviera. It's only 3,000 miles on it. it. Absolutely insane that somebody kept this thing nice, but let's get into the Cadillac. Wizard. Yes. So you're done drooling and fainting over my Cadillac now. I am. I've been actually finding some really strange discoveries on this. Yeah, movie. reality is kind of setting in and, uh, well, they're not really sketchy things. They're just, they're very interesting things. Very odd. So this guy liked to cool things, double cool, triple cool. He liked put coolers on top of cooler. It was really weird. You're talking about the previous owner yes. or owners. Yes. So we knew it had this one weird radiator right here that's kind of small to fit uh, the basically the factory. Cadillac motor, but obviously it has a big block 500 cubic inch V8 that needs a little more cooling to get down the road. And I was curious how that all worked. You have the uh, AC condenser up there as well. Yep. And then there's a couple of inlets on either side for what, what for a heater or something? They would have been for like blower motor inlet ducts, yes. But now it's for something else. Yes, so, this one over here goes to actually another radiator. It's really strange. Dual radiator. So you can kind of see in the wheel well, there's a duct. Like a tube. A tube of some kind was put in there. And then there's the rubberized kind of undercoating to, well, it, we didn't see it the first time. We didn't. And then you go in here, in the fender, and that's a radiator. Yeah, there's a fan and a copper radiator up in there it looks like heater hose is going to it which is very that's, i don't think anybody's ever put a radiator before on any car not like that but i guess it does something there's also a red thing oh that's the battery right there there's the optima battery yep okay with the cutoff mm -hmm. and then we go back here and there's a, a transmission cooler right here yeah kind of hidden out of the way on the floorboard i mean that makes a little more sense obviously yeah. transmission coolers are put in different places but yeah the uh the fender mounted extra radiator i guess they didn't want to worry about overheating and well that'll do it another radiator another fan yeah anything helps anything i see helps. you have a drive shaft out yes so this seal i don't know if you can see it so this seal is the tail shaft seal and it's actually leaking right here you can see where it was all wet through here. So you had used a, a colorful phrase about any balls out and things, uh, saying, you know, maybe it was pulling too hard or was, wasn't in far enough or out too, I don't know, you were it talking about- It was in too far. Oh. But when I, got, when I took the drive shaft out, I could see that it's, see where it's rusted here? Yeah. I think the car set for a long time, mm -hmm. it must have, and it actually corroded. It's hard to seal on top of rust. Oh, so when that started moving in, it blew up the seal? Right. And I think our air suspension being low or flat mm. makes this thing go balls deep. <laughs> so I need I need air in my suspension and I need you to polish my shaft. Yes. Okay. All right. That's right. We need to polish <laughs> that up. That'll take care of the seal. Wonderful. Okay. Any other challenges? Uh, any other? The brakes are strange. It's under here. I mean, that was normal when the car was new. But yeah. This is a vacuum booster brakes. Yes. And it was all wet with brake fluid right here. You can see the staining. 
I've cleaned it off, and I'm going to see if it continues to leak. It could be coming from the reservoir grommets. Okay. Or it could be the master cylinder itself. I just need to find out where. Yeah, it looks just like a normal General Motors brake master cylinder, but... It kind of does, but I don't... Not for, if I have to rebuild this or do anything, I'll have to do some serious research to figure out where it came from. Or what yeah, it but I imagine the parts are findable. It would just take research. Yes. Unlike other cars that are in here. Unlike that one, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the Porsche 928... Uh, well, anyway, I'm going to say bye to the Cadillac first. I love this thing. I mean, I was overjoyed because I thought the video was supposed to be like, oh, an old car and, you know, mm -hmm. no, people wouldn't watch, but... Man, I mean, I connected with this car eight years ago, never stopped thinking about it, and now to have it, it's just, I'm so happy. You saw my response when you first drove it in. Uh, I think everybody will remember that response forever. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the Porsche. So, I bought this thing on, bring a trailer, go figure, it's the same place where the Superbird came from, and it showed up with, uh, well, some issues. Go figure. Mm -hmm. So this is the second round of repairs. An exhaust leak that this car always had has gotten worse. That wasn't disclosed to me. And I noticed when we had it on the lift last time that rear shocks were leaking. I figured, well, we might as well replace the rear shocks. You know, I'm sure it would ride a little bit better if they're original. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're able to fix the exhaust leak real yes. easy, right? It was just a threaded plug for one of the metal pipes that go to the exhaust for, I think it's air injection. We are able to repair it and the noise is gone. But then a normal maintenance repair item Shocks, struts, whatever, something you should be able to get on pretty much any car, especially with so many 928s still on the road. Mm -hmm. Can't get them, huh? They're gone. I can get you the front ones, but this is the Bilstein, the S4 suspension, mm -hmm. and the Bilstein coilovers in the back, the, the, which came stock. I tried Pelican Parts, FCP Euro, World Pack. I tried several different companies. I actually put money out on two different companies. Both companies refunded my money and said, there are none. And the, the last guy that refunded my money, he I called him. He said, he said, bro, just just quit looking. There hmm. are none. Anyway, it, it's it drives fine. It's just leaking in the back. So I'll just rock it until maybe we have some show up. Or actually, though, I'm thinking about selling it because all the other Porsches uh, over at Leonard's, there's some progress. I'll have those back eventually. So I don't know. So this one's done as far as you go. You have a bill for me. Actually, since there was so much trouble and we found out such bad news on your struts, I'm just going to let the exhaust leak go. It's your birthday. Oh, it is my birthday today. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so no bill then. No bill. Um, all right. Well, I guess there is one other car to go look at, the Aston Martin, which, is there any progress? Yes, we're going back together with the fuel pumps. Hmm. Yes. Magic Mike, he's fresh back from his triathlon. How'd it go? It was good. I had a good time. Did you win? I did not win. <laughs> but you completed. I definitely completed, that's for sure. That's the important part. So yeah. you are deep in, you're on my subwoofer. Yep, Look so I've that. got underneath here all this insulation. Holy moly. Fuel pumps and everything are all back together. Okay. I'm gonna set this back in place. I got a few things I need to reconnect and then I'll give them a test, make sure they're working before I put the rest of the interior back together. Uh, why did those need to come out? Because in order to pull out these complete trims right here those vents had to oh, come out oh oh so the, oh basically the headline one piece. Piece. okay yeah. so that's there they were cheap fuel pumps with the labor i imagine ah there's a fuel pump yep i don't know there's no brand it says 2017 it was replaced it may be a i'm not sure but it definitely one of them was dead or well dying. was this the good side or the bad side i think that was the good side i have the bad side oh Right here, and this one has an older date stamp on it. And it has a little filter, is that what that is? Yeah, that one had one as well, I just removed it on that. Oh, yeah, 2015, yep. okay. So that was the bad one. All right, well, for some reason I thought fuel pumps would be bigger. Yeah, the whole assembly, they were plastic assemblies with the uh, check valves in them, and those didn't need to be replaced, luckily, it was just the okay. pump. The so. actual fuel pump assemblies like this big around and like that tall. Right, yeah. with the big filter and then I guess that's the smaller filter. All right, so how much were those fuel pumps? I think they were like a hundred some bucks a piece. All, you, all I did was replace the pump itself, right. not the whole assembly. Yeah, the labors. Yeah. Anyway, well that's why you're being generous on my birthday. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well I'm glad the triathlon went well. Yeah. There's some amazing photos up on it. And by the way, he is single, ladies, ladies, ladies. Anyway, I guess I'll take the 928 home since it's done. I brought up the Suburban 
I'm selling that, the Z71 Suburban. Uh, don't drive it anymore. It's got a seat motor that's failed on it. So, so thank you so much, Wizard, for the birthday gift. I'm going to go before you change your mind, and I'm going to go to Urination Bob and see why he's getting into land yachts, American things, rather than Euro nation, Euro Asian things. It's Urination Bob? Who? <laughs> Read my hat. Which makes no sense no now. No new jokes. Huh. <laughs> Look at this. Driving around in my land yacht. And you're not, you're <laughs> not Asian. Well, we got Boss Hog and his <laughs> his green cousin here. <laughs> what are you doing, Bob? 1975 at its finest. So, I've known Bob for a very, very long time. And I always had an affinity for these land yachts, but you, not really. Well, I mean, yes and no. You woke up, you woke it up in me, right? Because see, I grew up in these as a kid. Right. But I kind of forgot about them in bygone era. And then you showed up with that Lincoln. What year was that Lincoln you had? Oh, the '76. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you picked yeah. me up in that. We yes. were cruising around. And and, the '66 Imperial. And then you too. kept showing up at the shop with the Buicks, and I mean, you know, and you just, you just awoke to my inner desire for these cars. So instead of Euro Asian Auto Inc, it's Euro Asian and whatever else makes money Auto Inc, I suppose. But it's any cool car Auto Inc. You've actually had this thing for a while, just kind of tootling around as your driver, haven't you? Yes, yeah, I bought this in December with 17,000 miles on it and it's Jeez. got almost 19 on it now. I've literally put almost 2,000 miles on this car. And the shag carpeting. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's I guess it's, it's a time capsule. absolutely massive. Yeah, so. Is. And then I guess they uh, they populate. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, right. So then you came across this Thunderbird as well, huh? Yeah, it just is 24,000 miles. It's a they call it a Glamour edition, and they only made I think just a few hundred of them. It's really rare. But I drove this back from Illinois. Oh boy, yeah, that's yep. oh that's green. Not <laughs> not you. You look fine. I'm not talking about emerald green. Holy crap! Yeah, it is so cool. All right. I saw this and I saw the color and I just had to have it. Well, what's this one? I like the green. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Really? Yeah. Um, all right, well, it's on my website for $17,995. That's what it's on the website Okay. For. Uh, I guess your price, just a Hoobie only price for you would probably be, I don't know, I'd probably knock, I don't know, three grand off of that. Gee, okay, you're yeah, being that's generous. that's for you, that's for wow, you. Wow, okay. That's just for you. Yeah. I mean, I got to give you a good price. Well, that is really neat. I haven't I cleaned mean, it yet. That's what we brought it over here to do is go ahead and get it cleaned up and get it ready for sale. Even the wire hubcaps. I mean, yep. wowza. Okay. <laughs> <It's road laughs> Wait, is that is vinyl on the yes. trim? Oh, my God. So a, vi a vinyl impact strip in green going down this thing. And you see, that's what was deleted off of that car. That's ridiculous. Yeah, see, that doesn't have it. Okay. That would have came with it factory. So whoever ordered that car, special order, they ordered the side molding delete which gave you the beautiful little thin trim piece and the lower rocker panels. Well, I'm really happy with the 49 Cadillac and it's got, it's oh, got the 500 cubic inch. Trade you. Oh. <laughs> no, no, but it looks like, cause this is a shift automotive society where there's a bunch of cars being stored in your different owners. It's kind of like a car country club. So you have three stalls here. Three stalls, yeah. So you have, yeah, over there's a Ferrari 348 that we pranked yep. you with, the DeLorean. And the DeLorean. But uh, there's some new arrivals, these Cadillacs, which are, the same P38 Lightning, so it's up in the yeah. air like my Cadillac right now, looking like it's flying like a P38 Lightning. Oh yeah. So that's that's a what is that? 54? What is it? Don't, Don't know. get me lying. The, the Dagmars are bigger, most certainly. So somebody's <laughs> collecting Cadillacs here, and two convertibles. I mean, those things are they're, probably they're worth some. The same gentleman. Come here, check this out. Oh. The same gentleman. You have to look at this car. It's a Cadillac limo. Really? It's a Cadillac limo. Oh, and it's got the biggest Dagmars you could get. Holy <laughs> moly. That easy now. That easy. is something. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to touch people's easy. cars. Okay. Well no, no, no. It's just about getting it excited. Right, right. <laughs> yep. And then once you start going, Ooh. that's incredible. <laughs> yes, a very presidential thing, but as cool as all these cars are, Bob, that's that's not what I'm here for because Does that make you horny? It, <laughs> All right. <laughs> what what we're here for is you have a Buick Riviera. It's three thousand original miles. Two thousand seven seventy one when I picked it up. So somebody bought this new. Yes. Decided to put it a, a eighty five Buick Riviera. 
Yes, 85 Riviera. Decide of all the Buicks they're going to buy, not a Grand National, not a GNX, not, yeah. uh, you know, many other interesting American cars of the 80s to put away and just preserve. They chose an 85 Riviera. You know, but this was, this was top class without being like Cadillac ostentatious. I mean, this shares the platform with the Tornado and the Eldorado, but yeah. this is by far the most beautiful of the three. Those are the original tires. You're kidding original. me. Royal Wait Seal. Till you see this car. Why? Would, I mean, in the 80s, they had off roady looking treads like that from the factory? <laughs> yep. That's that quite a bite a, there. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Wait till you see this. This is the most absolutely stunning. Just slide into this car. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No. It's <laughs> showroom. I'm literally a dealer in 1985 showing you this car. It, it smells new. Yeah. The smell is what really just is. The icing on the cake. Holy smokes. So because it's a front wheel drive, the floor is completely flat. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, you can set the cruise and like... <laughs> I didn't that's... quite think about that, but... That's awesome. Okay, and the seats, I mean, it is a living room sofa. Yes, and look, this actually has their very rare sport interior. I, you I see, see that. The, the look, steering wheel and like that center console right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. They needed yeah, the center console. So it's technically a bucket seat. Right, exactly. It's bucket seat. <laughs> Barely. There's about, what, four inches. Anyway. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah. the automobile car show last weekend. But yeah, look at the... Uh, yeah, the Grand National-esque steering wheel. Yeah. Look at okay. the mileage now. Yeah. 2,784, which... There's, there can't be any left like this. This, no, this, this has got to be nicest it. nicest in the world. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime car. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So that's a, was that 305? Yep. Uh-huh. V8, 50, 305. Or 307, 305, I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. Five liters, what they're calling it. But look at it. I mean, look at the, all of the writing. <laughs> look, the, there's a sticker for the last little uh, service on mm -hmm. it. <laughs> This is I just put a new battery in it, and that's all I did, and I aired up the tires. Yeah, when you first got it with all the barn dust that was on it, it was incredible. It was. You, yeah. you didn't want to sell it to a YouTuber to do the barn find <laughs> thing, so because you, you got to do it yourself, obviously. And now you're no reserving it on Bring a Trailer, yes, yes. which, if there's a price, I mean, if there's a sell now price, I mean. Go uh, sign up and bid. <laughs> you oh, are it. 100 grand. Uh, yeah, right. Well, you write me a check. Uh, maybe not that, <laughs> but. You're just gonna, I mean, it's cool that you're gonna see what the nicest Riviera in the world is going to do, no yes, reserve. no reserve, yeah. Cause I mean, that's where this car belongs. Who knows what it's gonna do, but we're gonna get it in front of the right people. But it's been sitting for however long, so is well, it? Well, it was actually on the road in 13. So oh, okay. not that long. And the gentleman that, you know, it, this wasn't one of those that was just parked and forgotten. I mean, he started it, he filled it full of gas. I mean, he totally maintained the car. He had the battery on a tender. We hooked up the battery to it, hit the key, and it fired right up. And it had been running in almost 10 years. Yeah, fired right up. So it doesn't drive like absolute crap, needing everything sorted out because it's been sitting it forever. It drives like a new car. What I don't even understand is- He's a used car dealer. I don't believe this. Okay. I, I, go watch I, my YouTube video. You'll can see I see it, it for myself here? I'm let's, the, let's go drive it. Okay. You drive it. So we are on tires that are older than me. Yes. And we're- we're driving it, huh? Yes, yes. And they're not square they're, blocks. And it's, I don't even, honestly, I don't even understand that to be real honest with you. Well, this is definitely from back when Buick still knew its identity. Yes. And maybe it's a little bit of a grandpa brand, but that's totally fine, you know? Right. Uh, versus chasing sports car buyers nowadays and like slightly higher price crossovers than say a Chevy, you know, it didn't. I don't understand what they're doing today. I have no idea. They even did that rebadged European station wagon, you know, the Opal station wagon. Mm -hmm. that, and that was cool, but it wasn't, it wasn't Buick. No. I don't, I mean, this, if somebody built something like this today, it would sell really well. Maybe not a coupe, something with four doors or a wagon mm -hmm. or something, but an affordable old school land yacht, something with that like Bentley Rolls Royce feel, but right. obviously not at that price point and quality and all that stuff, but just the right. feel of it. Yeah. I think it would do really well. Look, look at the steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, do you feel, there is no, I mean, other than the undulations in the road, I mean, the tires are a little hard, right? right? So if this thing had new Michelins on it or Unirolls on it, it would ride smoother. But other than that, it just like brand new. So here's the original window sticker on the car. Check this out. How much? $20,234. So like this is base right here huh. and this is all options. I mean, even adjusted for inflation, that's... That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's uh, something, wow. 
Okay. Speaking of sporty Buicks, yeah. you are not going to believe this Buick that I just got in. So this is an 85, right? This one is an early 90s. <laughs> okay. Wait till you see it. I'm not even going to tell you. It's Euro Asian Auto Inc., the, the Buick specialist. <laughs> so what? Fine. Right. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, I'm going to get a rear view first. Oh, no. I see it on the other side of this Pulsar. Yeah. Oh. Is this the one with that hideous... No oh, it is. It is. The Beak. The, the, beak the Beak Buick. The Beak Buick. The Buick Skylark GS with the... Oh, my God. The face only a mother could love. You know what's funny, though, is when I, I remember when I first saw these cars that came out, this is 92. Yeah. And I thought, that is the ugliest car I've ever, ever seen. And now I love it. What is up with that? Uh... It's got alloy wheels. It's the GS. Yeah, this is loaded. And what motor? It's got a 3.3 liter V6. Oh. And check this out, Tyler. Oh, geez. And this is another one. 41,000 41, miles. 41,000 miles on it. Hey. AC's ice cold. Here, uh, let's, here. Check it out. Hey. Check it out. How much? How much? Look at that. Perfect. How much? Six grand. All right. This is turning into a little bit too much of a Bob commercial here. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's hilarious. That amazing. I, I don't want this one, Bob. Sorry. No, thank you. But thank you for watching.